So welcome, Nicola Farhan, uh, to the uh, Microsoft 365 feature demos. And this time we're talking about something really cool, which is SharePoint Web UI Kits. But before we go there, let's do a quick intro. So who is Nicole and who's Farhan? Cool. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Nicole. I am a product manager on the SharePoint Experiences team, and I get to work really closely with the SharePoint design system. And I am Farhan. I am a designer on the SharePoint design system team, um, leading everything from toolkits to tokens. Um, great team, great initiative, great product. Excellent. Um, Absolutely agree on the great product uh, thing. Been around for a long time on, on SharePoint personally as well. Now, um, before we go to the slides, Nicole, can you can you uh, kind of tease up a bit on wh why why SharePoint Web UI Kit is really really cool? What what's that all about? Yeah. So with the SharePoint Web UI Kit, it's an incredibly helpful tool to add to your toolkit. Essentially, what you can do with it is be able to mock up SharePoint sites and pages, and do that without having the process of building it in SharePoint itself. So if you needed to get any approval from business stakeholders or make sure that you could get confirmation uh, and kind of tease out all those little details before starting to build that actually in SharePoint, this is a really great tool for that. Excellent. And I know that you prepared some slides. So let's actually jump there. I will interrupt you with any questions as we go along, um, if there's any. Uh, but let's jump on the slides and go through the quick intros on that one. Let's go for, back to Farham in a second, but let's start with a few slides. OK, great. So as I mentioned, we're really excited to show you the Figma SharePoint Web UI Kit. And in this, you'll find ways to design communication and team sites for desktop, tablet, and mobile. So again, say that you're in the early planning stages of your intranet and you wanted to create a site that's based on business requirements and you want to get that buy-in from stakeholders. You'll be able to use a set of web parts, style options, templates, and other detailed guidance so that you can quickly design engaging sites and pages in Figma. For those who don't know what Figma is, it's a subscription-based application that is the industry standard tool for web design. So think about using this kit as a way to develop the look and feel of your site, as well as the flow of information before you build it in SharePoint yourself. Going through our toolkit, it is divided into three parts. So we have changed the look, we have templates and page elements, and we have our web parts. So first up, we have changed the look, and this is the section where you'll find theme assets, logo assets, header, navigation, and footer elements, and these are all available in different palettes and configurations based on your needs. The second section includes templates for communication sites and team sites, and you'll see ways to configure aspects like the page title region or different section layouts. And then lastly, we have the web part section. This is going to include some of our most commonly used web parts with all of their associated configurations. As a note, the items with green dots next to them are going to be those from our most recent version release and are available in the Figma community right now. So with that, we can hop into a demo. Let's actually do that. So let's let's jump on Farhan's uh, uh, screen. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Vesa. So let's go ahead and uh, fire up the Figma community toolkit. You can search SharePoint right in Figma community, you'll find the toolkit right here. Um, and once you open it up, this is your draft that belongs in your Figma environment. So really, it's a duplicate of everything that we have built in our internal toolkit for your external consumption. Um, just an overview, a lay of the land here. You will find your uh, layers and assets panel on the left-hand side, and then your local styles on the right-hand side. The local styles on the right hand side consist of textiles, colors, you will find uh, elevations and grid styles in there as well. Um, everything that's live in Fluent and uh, the master design system and in SharePoint today, um, you can find as assets for yourself to use. Examples, color over here. Um, the um, easiest way to understand all of this is the Project browser on the left-hand side, the sections that Nicole mentioned, change the look, templates and page elements and web parts are the divisions for the kit itself. When uh, you are playing with those assets inside, you will see the local styles deployed in those scenarios. The toolkit 
um, really forks into two approaches here. Uh, the first option really is for you to be able to copy a pre-built template of the SharePoint communications or team websites that exist live in SharePoint today. The second fork is for you to be able to create and customize a design from scratch using the assets that we have made available in the toolkit today. There's also some great literature here that says much of the same uh, local to this file that you can carry around and reference for yourself. But there are also resources, including Sigo, um, font, we've got fluent iconography, SharePoint theming resource information, accessibility uh, resources and plugins, and more SharePoint, Figma, and Microsoft learning uh, resources for anyone who has this toolkit to leverage. Diving into Change the Look, the first section, as I mentioned, has teal, the uh, iconic SharePoint teal color, and its assets uh, described over here alongside accent colors and neutral colors, but also all of the out-of-the-box SharePoint theme colors, including red, purple, green. You've got Cerulean and others included in this kit for you to use. Um, alongside that, we've got other um, assets, including logos. We've got headers, navigation, and footer components that are local to this file and you could own. The second section being templates and page elements, the uh, examples that I described include communication and team site templates, but we will come back to this in a second and I will show you how you can use this and customize this for your own needs. I'm gonna move on slightly quickly here to page, uh, page title components that you are also familiar with if you are a SharePoint user. You've got section header components in here as well. Um, really, the meat of all of this comes down to the third section where you have both simple and complex web parts. The button web part is, a, is by far the simplest example of a web part that we have included as a component in this kit. The interesting part over here is you can begin to expand out in this Figma kit hidden layers of base components that allows a owner of this kit who's distributing it perhaps locally in your company or your team to set permissions on this and lock it if necessary, but open it up and begin to change those components. And that will impact anything you see on the sheet. There are more complex components, of course, the hero component, or let's just look at the news web part component. Um, Again, the same idea where you can begin to expose all of the variations of the news web part that exist from top story, list, side-by-side, -side, hub and carousel layouts, and their different tiles. You will find guidance within each one of those scenarios and how those properties work within Figma and then how they lay out in the different templates and different column sizes, one column, half column, two thirds, one third, what have you. Um, you will find um, all of these under web parts and how they factor into the templates is what we will go back to now. So let's look at the example of, let's say, um, a Teams website at a 1366 breakpoint. Uh, with no content injected, these are the column layouts that you will see, and they're true to size um, to what's live in product today, one-to-one -one in Figma. Let's begin to look at the two ways that you can begin to replace assets in here. So let's say you are looking at this header title. You can, option one, go into this drop-down menu and begin to change assets from here, whole set. And that will allow for you to swap out header variations. Another way you can do this is on the right-hand side in the properties panel, we've created properties for you to be able to begin to swap these assets um, for what's live in product today. And here I'm flipping through different variations of the site header, this being the extended. You, we have options such as show, hub navigation, alignment, left, right, or center. 
um, and other really neat tricks in here. Um, what is an other option is the left-hand side assets panel with a more drag and drop function where you can, for, for instance, take the hero tile component and straight inject it into your uh, communication and your team's website in this instance. If it doesn't fit, that's where we have different breakpoints to really match these grid styles that we've established above. When you are selecting an entire frame, you can go ahead and even change out um, accent colors from here. You can begin to define your own company colors at this level, um, or you can go ahead and define them at a local style level. You can go into theme primary, for instance, and put in whatever hex value works best for your company, and all of the corresponding assets will adjust accordingly. Um, if you do want to, let's say, change imagery on here, let's look at the latest one that we just injected. Very simple exercise of finding what's local on your uh, server or your drive, and then beginning to edit content as needed and beginning to export this out from Figma directly using um, the export functions that exist um, in Figma pre-built, but then also looking at dev mode, which is one of Figma's new features that really allows for you to export to your engineering partners rather seamlessly. That's um, a good place, I believe, to stop the demo aside from one final thing, which is uh, something you've all been clamoring about, the change log. Um, our change log really documents all of the additions and updates that we make to all of the versions of the Figma community toolkit that we share out. You'll find version 2.2 has new components and then some updates. And this is the best way to track any updates that we do make to this community toolkit for all of you to leverage. Um, cool. Back to you, Vesa. Thank you, Farhan. And now immediately two questions, and I'm not gonna let you go from the screen sharing. So, so first of all, question number one, as you are more natural in a Figma, we could actually see that you can modify the UX faster than the SharePoint UX. So as a designer, this is really a design tool for designers to take advantage and kind of do, do and figure out what kind of layout options are available and how it would look like within a SharePoint, right? That's correct. Yeah, because you, you actually really showed the speed for you because you're natural in Figma on, on doing these things. Now, if if I would have, or if my company would have invested on a custom web parts, um, correct me if I'm wrong, as you have those web parts there, out of the box web parts just as well, I can take advantage of the similar model for the custom web parts as well. Absolutely. Copying the so... structure and then whatever the web part is doing, making that exposed here. Absolutely. And so that's the idea here is using the web parts that we have built into this toolkit as a best in class example of all of the local styles. Let's say we've applied to this countdown timer. You can go ahead and duplicate this countdown timer sheet all together and then all of the assets that are hidden over here and use that as a foundation for customizing and building your own web parts. The great part about this is you own this file, this is a duplicate of what's available on the Figma community. So you are free to plug and play, add or subtract um, as you see fit, apply the assets that make sense to you and publish it with all of the partners you're collaborating with on a daily, weekly basis. Really cool, awesome, awesome, super valuable, super, super, super cool stuff. Now uh, let's flip on the on the talking head mode a bit and, and just talking about the future of things. So the, it's version 2.2 as we're recording is the latest version. Uh, are we gonna have a new version still in this spring where we're recording this in April, 2024? Are we, what kind of, what is the future uh, holds for this toolkit? Yeah, so. so we are regularly trying to add additional items to the toolkit. It may be new web parts, it may be new styles and templates to leverage, and we'll make sure that all of those updates are posted on the tech community post. 
And that's something that we are hoping to do on a regular basis. So, you know, every semester, every quarter, depending on the new updates that we want to incorporate, um, as well as some of the new stuff that's coming out from our partner feature crews. Cool. That's really, really cool. And, and great that we're committing on, on doing this as a continuous thing rather than a one-off because the one-offs are cool, but then pretty soon they run out of time. Uh, so it's, it's an important that we keep on updating uh, these kind of assets. But I guess that's pretty much sums up the, the planned topics which we're planning to cover today. Um, any additional thoughts, Nicole Farhan, related on the talking? Yes, I think one of the uh, advances that Figma has made is including the tokens and variables into their uh, environment. And that is definitely one of the bigger captures that we're hoping to do in whatever versions we release, um, is including um, color variables, topography variables, elevation variables, um, and everything that can help whoever is using this kit get, or get closer to engineering partners, really leverage dev mode built inside of Figma and really be one-to-one -one between design and code without having any hard-coded values, any extraneous uh, questions that come up as you're handing off your stuff to your teams. Yep. Definitely, and and a super super valuable thing. I've, so I've been designing even .dot com sites based on a SharePoint backend when that was supported. So we used to do this all all in PowerPoints or drawing and things. So we have evolved a lot since those ages. It, it's a, it was a really great demo, Darkin Farhan, also showing how easy it is for you when you know how Figma actually works. It was super super fun, and thank you, Nicole, for coordinating all of this work. Really cool to have you on the show. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Cheers. And we'll come back with a, a new episode uh, as we have new news. Uh, but thank you for this one. Cheers. Thank you.